Teresa. Welcome. Welcome. Out there, brothers and sisters, everyone. Welcome to the Rascon Teresa podcast. This is the post blizzard episode. This is the post blizzard episode. It is episode. February 21st, 2021. You fans of numerology will know what to make out of that because I sure as hell don't, but it's <laughs> going to be something good. <laughs> we are coming to you live, semi live, from the Fictional town of Chico, Chico, uh, Chico. Chico well, Brent. I don't know where we are, but you know what? We are there, and we're coming to you there. My name is David Kendall. You might have heard of me from, well, okay. So you probably never heard of me, but you can't say that about my podcast and partner, <laughs> Nobel Prize winner in chemistry, physics, and economics. Pulitzer Prize winning journalist for the Hootersville Herald, where he penned the intriguing. Series Rutabagas, friend or foe. Oh, and don't forget the uh, and go- and and seven time, seven time Grammy nominee <laughs> in the category of psych, jazz, and or other. <laughs> Heavy on the other. Brian Newton for. <laughs> Let's hear it for our rock and retail. Look, Dave, Dave, I'm so glad you're here. And by the way, you've heard of Dave. Come on, man. If you've been uh, hanging around New Orleans. Any of the New Orleans time? New Orleans. No. You've been hanging around any of the uh, storytelling time here? In Orleans. Orleans? Yeah. Is that you call it? If you're cool. That's yeah, cool? that's what their locals say it. Ah, I get Here's you. Here's a tip for everyone. If you go to, the, don't call it the Big Easy. Nobody, just don't do that. That's like going to San Francisco and saying Frisco. Oh, yeah. Locals just <laughs> live here for a while and see how easy it is, motherfucker. <laughs> or the people that come here from California, Dawson, go, this ain't California. Yeah. It's like, get the fuck out. Oh man, I just I got all egotist, all all Austin proud, a little bit on the crazy side. Oh, just then? Yeah, I always hate when people start telling I'm from California to get the fuck out. But got to tell you, man, and I lived in California when I was out there, and I will say this much: most of the people that come from California bring a shit ton of mediocrity, and that's about it. Well, most people that come from anywhere bring a shit ton of mediocrity when it really comes down to it. If they're He's not. talking about a bell curve. Yeah, yeah. But I think if you come from, seems like a lot of people come from Texas, bring, at least coming from, from out, of, out of Texas towns into Austin, most of those people bring something a little bit different because they hated their town so freaking bad that they wanted to get to Austin and do something different. Hey, man, look at here. Here's my theory. This is not just a theory. Is it a, is it a, a factotum? It could be, or it could be a, and hot. And hypothesis. Ooh, wow. So, wow. Uh, I love those words. Oh, you know what? I'm really, uh, yeah, here's my theory. All right. Okay. So I moved here in 1989. Came yeah. here from a tiny little town up in Cottage, Cottage Grove, Tennessee. Tiny little place. You know, came to Austin 1983. Before that, I had a cousin that came to Austin like 10 years in the 70s. He came back. I was 16. And he was like my mentor. He taught me how to play guitar and stuff. And he was like raving. He said, I just came back from Austin, Texas. And I knew what, where Austin in, was because of the TV show. In the 70s, heck, man, that's crazy. And he was like, man, I, yeah, man, he went, went to this, started all the music, man. I saw the fabulous Thunderbirds. I went to this place called the Soap Creek Saloon. Yeah. And, so, you know, that was a bar out in yeah, BK. Out, it was out, in BK, BK on, out on a gravel road yeah. owned by Doug Som. And he said, I saw this guy, this great band. He had a killer guitar player. His name was like Stevie Vaughn. <laughs> He said they had quarter shots of tequila and everybody was smoking dope. And then they had this spring in the town. Man, there's like these beautiful topless women just wearing like bikini bottoms and cowboy boots. Oh my God. Said, I'm moving back. Hell yeah. Man. He didn't. He didn't. But then I came here in 83 and I'm just, you know, that's a whole nother thing. And I was, then I moved here in 89. But see, when I came here, Austin wasn't a money town. No, no, no. That was, you had to scuffle, man. It took me like years to get stable. Yeah, you know, and uh, oh, I almost ran out of drug money there for a minute, <laughs> and um, 
And, you know, so, but then, like, the dot-com boom hit. And that was, all of a sudden, it was like, I've got a degree in graphic arts from Samsung or the yeah. Applied Materials, somebody like that. It's like, do you want $75,000 a year? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, what's my job? I don't know. It's, yeah. And, like, having, it like, you know, their their New Year's Eve parties would have, like, Stevie Wonder. Oh, yeah. Paid a million bucks. Oh, and yeah. all of a sudden, it literally changed and the day that I saw, I'll tell you the day I knew it changed, the day I was walking across the Whole Foods parking lot, and I saw a Keep Austin Weird Bumper sticker on a Mercedes-Benz SUV, and thank you, Don Henley, for writing the first version of that song, as far as I know. <laughs> I knew right then, I'm like, jigs up. It is, it's man. Over. Did you did you ever get caught up in any of those dot-com? Did, did you ever work any of that shit? No. I, I almost did one time. I was at this one I lived in L.A., and these people called me up, and it was a, a deal that, that Bob Dylan's manager had started. He had started it, and uh, it was a, a, that what they are going to do, they were going to stream movies on the Internet, right? And I kept looking at them going, well, why doesn't just like, you know, Warner Brothers or Fox just do it themselves? And they kept going, these guys looked at me and goes, because we're doing it. We're doing it. And I go, well, I go, okay, I don't understand why. They have, the con- they have the content. Why would they get you? Oh, no, no, because we're doing it. And I go, all right. He goes, he goes, so well, you want to come work? I go, I don't know. What's the salary? And he, t- he quoted me some, some number, right? It was a big number. And I go, shit, that's base salary? He goes, well, no, no, no. I mean, what it is, is that th- that's the stock you'll get. That's the stock you'll get in the company. That's it. And he goes, what you're going to get paid <laughs> was like a tenth of that, you know? And I was like, what? And like, he goes, no, no, because no, the stock's going to be big. That's, that's was your it big, Netflix? That's your big investment. Hell no. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, it's that's gone. The, the company's worked. gone. The company's yeah. gone. I mean, yeah, it was like, what, poof? Yeah, yeah, totally went poof because it was all these guys. I kept sitting there going, I don't understand. I go, okay, well, man, how, like, what's the bottom line? How profitable is this company? Well, our revenues are. I go, I don't give a shit about revenues. You can fake that shit. I go, how much money are you making? And they, it was like the weirdest job interview because they kept looking at me like, you don't want this job? And I was like, I kind of want to know how much money I'm making. <laughs> but it's all about like, it's stocks and, and man, it's pride working here. I'm like, yeah, pride doesn't pay my fucking rent. Sorry about that, man. So I only did it one time. Hey, by the way, did you have something you wanted to do as an uh, intro to uh, what we got going here? I just did it. Oh, was that it? Yeah, that was my intro. Oh, okay. Well, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. Did you want to actually... <laughs> did you want to have sex? Well, we just did. We just did. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. Did you remember? <laughs> I apologize. I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna make some big proclamation before it. You know, I, I should have got. I should have known. Hypothesis. That was a deal. That was a deal. Oh, you mean about the? What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Willis? I thought you were gonna have an intro to like the Ron Contreras. That was podcast. it. When I was like, "Hey, everybody out there, it's the Ron Contreras <laughs> podcast post Blizzard episode." Let's just do this again. Post Blizzard episode. Uh, February 20th. Did this ring a bell to you? February 21st, it does, 2003. It does. Stop me when you I, I thought you were going to go. Because you were like, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I was like, all right. So I'm waiting around for it. And then what you did there, I was like, what? I thought there was, I don't know. I thought there was going to be, I'm sorry. I thought there was going to be bigger to die. I apologize. I really, I really, it was a good intro. It really was a good intro. It was, it was me. I'm a bad intro listener, obviously. <sighs> Well, you just leave. You just yeah. Yeah, I know. I can't. I'd left you speechless listener. on that one. Bad listen. Uh, here's the intro. <laughs> Birds, dog, Cadillac, <laughs> hillbilly <laughs> music, <laughs> lonely, lonely place that I come. Man, I remember one time I was standing at Liberty Lunch. You know, there's two. There's two groups of people. Those that have. Been to Liberty Lunch and those hat. Have you been? I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> no. Uh, Liberty Lunch and intros. I missed both of them. I stand there one time by a guy in a cap, and this guy turned around real fast and knocked my beer over. And uh, I was like, oh, shit. And I turned around, and he's like, oh, man, no problem. I'll buy you another. Dwight Yoakam. What? Yeah, Dwight Yoakam. Really? He was standing there. Yeah, I wish I could remember the band. He was just, he was just in there. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dwight. I think that guy is I'm so. like, you are just poured into those jeans, aren't you? <laughs> I recognize you, and I didn't see your face. Oh, 
my God. Oh, man, it is. Those jeans, man. He is like, I've, I've seen him. I've only seen him perform, I think, twice. And yeah, twice. And it is just a riot. I mean, those, those it's like that move. It, the only one that, that rivals it better is Marty Stewart. Marty Stewart's outfits are, 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 are quite over the top, but but you know yeah. What is he anyway? He's like a uh, he's like got a mariachi suit with a with a mullet. Yeah, yeah, and, and then an like, ascot, and, and, and then he's got like what, yeah, they got the ascot, and it, by, he's so awesome. But then he those those pants kind of flare down to where you just see the little tip of the boot coming out. Yeah, I mean, I he's, mean, a, it, he's a fat, he's a thread god. Oh no, and that and the uh, that ascot. I mean, like it comes like. Like right up underneath the chin. It's not he, like here. I mean, it's like he's got a goiter. Uh, he might, you know. Maybe I don't. Like a, I mean, it almost looks like you like dude to tattoo up up to here. You know, you're kind of like like that. Fucking goiter. Like, <laughs> making fun of that. Yeah, I making saw man. Fun of goiter. You ever seen him, Marty Stewart? Yeah. No, I have never seen him. I would love to see him. Well, when you, if you get a chance, because yeah. I, I saw him at Green Hall one time and uh, just had that record, country music. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's the one. It starts out with Porter Wagner song, Satisfied Mind. And, uh, man, I'm telling you what, boy. I mean, he played like, okay, five, maybe half a dozen different genres of American oh, music yeah. to perfection. I mean, oh, yeah. bluegrass, blues, rock, country, gospel, and he might even dipped in a little reggae in there just, to, <laughs> just for a minute. Just so I can. No, I just don't want to. I mean, because he's been playing since he was like what he was in. Uh, was it Scruggs Band at thirteen playing or something? Since these babies, Nashville. Yeah, he was playing with uh, 13, yeah something like that. Well, and then like he knew Bill Monroe and oh yeah, yeah he was playing with the Flat and Scruggs. Hey, uh, I guess. Hey, hey. By the way, I want to apologize. Dave and I are outside because we're just so happy to be outside, but. People are outside mowing and chainsaw. And everything. I'm going to tell like, you what Roy Cohn told me. Don't ever apologize for anything. <laughs> Apologizing is bad. Just ask for forgiveness. No way. Don't even do that. Don't even do that. Don't even ask for permission. Don't ask for forgiveness. Do your thing, baby. You know, you know what? I, you know what I love? I love is that 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 impression is going to be going away. That's what I love. I'm keeping it alive. <laughs> Twenty five. <laughs> Oh, hey, man. man. So, I, you know, I'm pretty excited about one thing I'm excited about today is our top 10. Oh, yeah. Hey, real quick, I want to give you a shout out. You a shout out. Okay. Because during, and, and for anybody who doesn't know this, it was a week of snow hell here, cold down to six degrees. Everybody, lo I lost power for a day. For a day. Dave lost power for like damn near five days, right? Four days. Mm, three, four. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here it is. Everybody else is posting stuff on online about like what they're going through and how crazy it is and all the stuff going on. And I and I texted you. I go, Hey, Dave, are, you know, you doing okay? You got any power? You go, No, no power. And then the next thing you did, you flipped it like you were fucking taking on that blizzard. You're like, It gives me power. I feed off of it. I bring it on in my. I mean, it's like it's like it's. I just pictured you out there in the snow going, Is that all you got? Wow. Is that all you got? I mean, you're cracking me every time you. <laughs> You, te you text me these things, and it'd be like, like I'm going to kick it its balls. I'm going to take it down. <laughs> it was so awesome, man. Oh, boy. That's a Potemkin village. I oh, saw it. man. I was cracking every time I'd read about that. i read your text. It was just like, that bitch is mine. Taking it. Taking it down. Because you know what? Now, frostbite is a small price to pay to keep the federal <laughs> government out of our business. Yeah. We, you want them coming down here and say, you can't let old people and children freeze to death just because you got a snowstorm. I say, hold my beer. I'm Texas. <laughs> that, that, that sums it up right there. Sums it up right there. Like I don't it. want the government tell me what to do. You mean to do things right? That's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Let them die. Yeah. The government ain't going to be in here. You, you want that cheap energy, don't you? Oh. Yeah, you see some of the bills that have been coming in? Yeah, like $100,000 for coming <laughs> But yes, Dave, you This ought to kill a few more old folks. You are right. Send them $1,600,000. Uh, you are right, though, about the top 10. Oh, hey, I want to say, I figured out on our YouTube, on our YouTube, I sung some of them, on the YouTube, uh, how to click. If you go to the, 
the l lower left hand side, there's a way you can click to subscribe to it. I actually found that and put that on there the other day. And if you can't do yep. it there, it's just below the screen. Just below the screen. Says subscribe. Click on that. Subscribe. You yeah. got nothing to lose. Yeah, you're just and and even when we sent out a thing saying we've uploaded one, you can block it. It doesn't hurt. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 All right. I got no. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, you want? I kicked a storm's ass. I don't need your approval. All right. Well, here I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have a drink to a storm's ass. Do you want a small one? Yeah. Yeah. I'm back on the. I'm back on the white horse. Back. <laughs> Back on the white, white, white lightning? Yeah, well, this is an experiment. That's all you're going to get, though, Dave. That's it. You're cut off. You're already cut off. Man, I usually spill more than that. Well, there you go. That's, that's <laughs> eyewash for me. <laughs> all right, there we go. To the great blizzard, blizzard that, 20. That, that you kicked its ass. Blizzard 2021. Now I got cold as fuck, man. Oh, you I got did? really cold, but it was like it's part of my it's part of my new training. Mm -hmm. You know, it's part of my new your Hoffian world. My Wim Hof method. Wim Hof. He would be outside. It's you are weak if you cannot melt the snow with your buttocks. <laughs> breathe. What, what part of the buttocks? Breathe. <laughs> I need to eat some more chilies, Wim. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> Dave is into this, uh, into this cold, cold ice, cold water, cold bath, cold, cold the everything. Wim, the Wim Hof method, and it's to uh, and, oh, and breathing, right? Cold, cold, hard. Yeah, it's a it's a breathing, cold water immersion uh, regime. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's good. I urge anybody to check out Wim Hof. Fascinating. Got me off of high blood pressure medicine. Uh, really. Yeah, what else? Let's see, what else was it? What else happened? Won the lottery. Uh, <laughs> had sex with Farrah Fawcett. She'd been dead a long time, but... That's that's not weird. That's, that was awful. That's just call, that's called just a bucket list. You know, one time I was in, like 20-something years ago, I was in the Four Seasons Hotel Bar, and I was meeting my friend Kara, who... Uh, Beautiful blonde woman cuts my hair. You know, used to cut my hair. Man, what a babe! And uh, I was there. And she was late. And uh, like I was walking back from the bathroom, and I saw this blonde woman walking across the lobby. Oh, there's Kara. You know, blonde hair, real stylish. And I just go up and like, hey, like go up right behind. Her, hey, you. Yeah. Turns around, has big sunglasses on. <laughs> Does. I'm like, hey. She puts her puts her. Sunglasses up. She looks at me. It's Farrah Fawcett. Oh my God! I just went up and like, hey, to Farrah Fawcett. She went, hey. <laughs> she did. Yeah. <laughs> did Dwight Yoakam buy y'all a and beer? And I was like, uh, but uh, well, I'm a, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a weakest. Mo it's a it's the sad. It's the moment I'm most ashamed of in life. <laughs> Farrah Fawcett goes, hey, and I'm like, oh, I thought you were somebody else. <laughs> became Mr. Haney. Yeah. No, just some, I don't know some what you're pimple about. 13 year old kid. <laughs> and walked off. And my friend, she's like, What? You should be up in her room right now. <laughs> yeah, because that's how it goes. <laughs> in my mind, it does. I don't see anything wrong with that. It's a little fun. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not hurting anybody. <laughs> Lee Majors, he doesn't care. Oh, well, oh yeah. <laughs> Farrah Fawcett walked up. She goes, good Lord, remember, get security, security. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying I know everything about, but this wasn't like, I mean, I got, maybe she thought it was, she probably thought it was, who was Antonio Banderas or something. I've been told that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I get, yeah, okay. Oh, you're That's not it. Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> get out of here, you plebeian. <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> That's like the only guy, like somebody said, you look like a young Tommy Lee Jones. Really? Yeah, well, I'm glad I don't look like an old, old Tommy, Tommy Lee Jones. That. <laughs> that guy's not aged well. No, But not. he's a great, I love, why would I say that? That's so shitty and catty. Have you ever seen him, did you ever see him like when they were promoting. Uh, I love the guy. They were promoting um, uh, Men in Black. Well, I've seen Men in Black. Have you seen where they were promoting it and, and uh, who is it? Who is that rapper? Nelly was interviewing him. And I guess Nelly, for like a little thing for a while, there was like a little look was he just put a Band-Aid on here. And it pissed off Tommy during this freaking interview so bad. He kept looking at me and goes, 
what, 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 what's that bandage on your eye for? And, and, and uh, Nellie go, well, that's just my look. Well, I mean, did you, did that's you, did you, did you hurt yourself? Did you cut yourself? And, and he kept, and he kept looking at me going, what do you do for a living? What do you do? And he goes, well, I'm a rapper. A rapper. What's that? I don't, but a rapper. With a bandage, a, a, a bandage, and you're not really hurt. Is that what you're rapping? And that it was like the weirdest thing because you could see Nelly thought he was joking around, and <laughs> you could tell it just, he was just pissing him, pissing him off, man, just pissing him off. Wow. <laughs> that's that's tough. I think he would be a very hard guy to hang out with. He seems very. If he's uh, anything focused. like his characters, he seems very. Boom, 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 and focused. he always does kind of play the same. He does kind yeah. of like the no bullshit kind yeah, of. Like, even like when he's doing funny stuff, like man, he was hilarious at minute. Oh, he was, but, but it was because, perfect. yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah, yeah. You know, the part was, you know, or uh, yeah, I can't think of. I know. I it, mean, like you know that was man, lonesome dove boy. That was a good one. Oh yeah, that oh, was yeah. the best. That was a perfect dynamic right there. Yeah, sort of like like me and me, Robert Duvall, Tommy Lee Jones. There McCall and what was the other guy's name? Woodrow and Cole. Woodrow and Cole. That's yeah. right. That's which one, right. Who, which one do you want to be? I don't care. No. I'm just glad to be part of it. You're Barry Dave. Corbin's character. That's all I care. He got about. shot off a meal right off the bat. Okay, that'll work for me. What? At least I was in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you could be a you could be a head of a, a cow and say that. <laughs> I'll take anything. I don't care. Yeah. Oh, I'm cactus. Not, I'm not greedy. Fake cactus. I'm not greedy. Hey man, look at my cactus out there. Look at look at how oh, the, know, they, how, they, the they, how the how the ice just no. wilted it, man. They melted them. Isn't oh, that weird? Man, just did. All right. So Dave had a great idea of uh, us doing a uh, top ten. Why don't you explain? Explain. I just call these desert island, desert island, di- desert island disc. You know, and uh, you know, just like that. If you could, if you had to, that, just kind of an exercise. If you had to name ten songs. You know, you couldn't live without if you were on a desert island, and it just happened to be a jukebox there. And I guess Tom Hanks had just left and took the soccer ball with him, and <laughs> then there's a jukebox, and all of a sudden it works just like in an Elvis movie. You know, like any time Elvis needed to sing a song, it just happened to be a jukebox. And so let's say there's a jukebox <laughs> on the desert island. You just landed there, and you're like, and there's no, like, brown-skinned, beautiful natives. Like, you know, you're not Gauguin or anything, so you wind up some <laughs> deserted <laughs> tropical island. But there just happened to be a jukebox there with enough solar juice left to play 10 songs. I love that because um, I told Dave earlier I don't believe in this top 10 because there's no electricity on a on an island. He goes, oh, you're going to be that way, are you? Oh, so boy. I love how you thought up your comeback to this. Hey, you know what, solar. I love that. Hey, I I, love you know that. what I just found out? There is no stairway to heaven, actually. <laughs> believe that. Well, and we you see. can't fly me to the moon. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, well. Well, that's going to really suck because those two songs are on my top ten. God, thanks, Dave. What does automatic for the people mean? It's just, there's, that's not literal. Is a car? I don't know. As we said earlier, you know, stick a you know, feather in my cap, call it macaroni, you know? Yeah, that was, that was a – that's right. I remember that. That's a good – that's a, that's right, macaroni. That there just, you go. I, Yankee think, I think that just goes to show that Yankee Doodle did druggies. That just blows the whole – blast the whole – so anyway, so we're doing a ten – I'm gonna stop. And I'm gonna start from ten and go down. And and by the way, uh, I will post these. Give me yours when we're done. I'll post these on the uh, on the the YouTube channel. So yeah, because we can't play any of this shit because uh, we have to pay royalties or uh, or something. they just knock you off of it. They do now. It's well, they called, demonetize you, which is not a problem. For yeah, us. yeah, for us, like you know, great. Yeah, there's something called DMCA, digital monetization, something that kicks you off. Okay. But yours is in order, huh? I just I said I'm gonna go ten. Uh, I mean, it's roughly, you can't, t- trying to pick the I, 10 favorite songs is impossible. Oh, oh no, it was like, I, I can't tell you how many times I wrote it out, and then I, I kid you not, I'd be in my car, and I hear something go, oh, shit. I, that, oh, 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 yeah, I got to put that one on. Yeah, now. you got to be sort yeah, of, you, gotta this, you have to be sort of brutal about this. Oh, totally yeah, you can't brutal. just like, oh, you know. And, and I can tell you on mine, the, uh, the, the top nine are kind of like whatever. The number one one is number one, but the rest of Same them are kind of all over here. Same here. Same all here. Right. Oh, and... One sentence, one sentence description only. That's it. I Name the song, it. sentence description. Do Here wanna, we go. Do, do you want to go 10, 10, 9, 9? That's the way I think we should do it. All right. All Sounds right. Good. Brian, number me, 10. Me go You're, first? Yeah. All right. Fight the power, public enemy. It's because the raw power and the emotion of that song. Very good. Awesome. 
My number 10. Yes. Wicked Game, Chris Isaac Ooh. from Heart Shaped World. Ooh. A classic in every sense of the word, this tortured love song is ethereal, timeless, sexy as hell, and a balm for broken hearts everywhere. Oh, my God. You put a lot more into this than I did. That's, that's pretty typical <laughs> of this podcast in general, I think. Isn't it sort of like you just got our, our ethos has just been exposed. And Number nine. Uh, and by, let, me, let me throw in that, that one, though. One of the best freaking videos ever made. What? Oh, that. Yeah. yeah I just yeah. didn't have. And, and Chris Isaac did say, he goes, yeah, they talk about that girl. He goes, yeah, she didn't even want to talk to me. <laughs> she didn't mind rolling around on the sand when the camera's on. But... <laughs> and Chris Isaac's a man. He, and do you know he had, a, he, he had yeah. a show on Showtime, I think? Funny as hell. The guy is really, really funny. I saw him in concert. A couple of times, and the guy is hilarious. Oh, really? Man. He's wearing a big spangled, yeah, like this. Is that what you call a sequin? Sequin mm. jacket. He yeah. said, You know, the first time I came to Austin, uh, man, it was just my career was just getting started. He said, This jacket had one sequin on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, a great record, too. Heart shaped uh, world. All, all right. right. Number nine, Brian. Steel Ways by Pear Ubu. You ever heard of him? I have heard Art of him. Art band out of uh, Cleveland. And what I just wrote here on very uh, short and sweet, Art Rock at its finest. Pear Ubu. Steel Wave. Da, 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 there you go. Me? Yeah, number nine. Number nine. Dave. Okay, Dave, Dave, number nine. Dave. Nikki Hokey, Aretha Franklin off of Lady Soul. When it comes to singers, there's two categories, Aretha and everybody else. Oh, snap! Yeah, I'm throwing it down. Snap! Yeah. Clean a soul. Now I gotta admit, I don't, I don't know that song. It's at least ob- by the title. It's obscure. Oh, Nikki it Hokey. Yeah, I'll have to look that. N-I-K-I. one up. It's got the funkiest bass line. Yeah. Which uh, and is recorded down to like Muscle Shoals. You know those yeah, guys, yeah, the yeah. Swampers yeah. or whatever yeah. those guys were called. Uh, well, Muscle Shoals. No, the, the Swampers were another. No, but no. Muscle Shoals was the. It was just a show. I mean, they were called, they were, their studio was called Fame. One F A M E was the Muscle Shoals. I don't think they had a name like Wrecking Crew or anything like that. It was just the Muscle Shoals guys. It was like Patterson Hood from the Drive By Truckers. Think, his dad Spooner yeah, his Oldham dad was on there, and all, Spooner Oldham right. and Dan Penn. And then sometime, what's his name? Would go down from Memphis and play there, or uh, the old oh, North Mississippi all. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, Dixon. Dixon. Yeah, Dickinson. 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 Yeah, Dickinson. Yeah, he would yeah, go yeah. down there. And we should do a whole show on Jim Dickinson sometime. I don't know enough about him, but I know he's, he's I mean, the guy, he's he's like the Zelig. Or the, he's, he's a Forrest Gump. Of, he's like, crazy. Well, he was playing piano on, like, Wild uh, the, Horses or something uh, like yeah, that. Yeah, Wild Horses. And he produced the uh, he produced uh, Alex Chilton and produced The Replacements. Yeah. And my friend, he produced my friend Ross Johnson's last album. And, yeah, he was uh, a real character. Yeah, he was, and yeah, that that would be a fun show to do on that. I think they were called the Swampers. I don't. I think Maybe. there was some there was some <laughs> studio band called the Swampers. I think it might have been them. It's name checked and well, I got to tell Muscle you, I, Shoals has got the Swampers. They've been known to fix a song or two. Hey, there you go. I think that was yeah. yeah. Unless you just made that up and you, I buy it. And, are you um, ready for number eight? Uh, we're going on to number eight, but I got to give props. That was one I didn't know of, so I, I've already learned. I've learned something with uh, with that one. Okay, number eight, Time Bomb by Johnny Rotten and Africa Bombada. Mm. It's the only song they did together. I saw it on USA Night Flight one time, was blown away. And that's what I said, USA Night Flight, and it's got a killer beat and grit. It's amazing. I did. I knew Johnny was, obviously. I had no idea who Africa Bombada was. And I learned more than about him, about his band Zulu Nation and all this stuff. And, oh, wow. And he's like this funk space guy. It's it's like sort of Sun Ra-ish sort of shit. And uh, with a funk deal to it. But Time Bomb, it, it's, I, they only did one song. That was it. That was wow. it. Wow. Yeah. Oh, one hit wonder. One, oh, or just a, not even a one non hit wonder. One non hit wonder. Yeah, yeah. one non hit. But. It, there's a great video out on it, so that one's well worth checking out. Yeah, it's funny how the sex those guys went on to, you know, like they all kind of em, sort of embraced like world. Well, all of those, I mean, all those guys from like the '70s back in England, they, they must have been, they must have just been, what like the world music thing. They were all sort of embracing. They it, they you know? had a lot more exposure. It's funny. I watched the Go Go's documentary last night, and they were talking about how the Specials and Madness came over here and loved them, and so they took them on tour, but. What I was talking to Donna about is that 
all those bands from England, they were exposed to all this reggae music, you know, and so not like we were here, but there because of Don Letts and all those cats, they were exposed to this reggae like we weren't. So yeah, they got a lot more of this True. world music, True which that. which is very cool. Well, they had all those, you know, they had all those like uh, the the neighborhood, you know, they had whole neighborhoods in oh, yeah. London would be like it'd be like Jamaica or oh, yeah. India or you know, so yeah. they had all that going on. You know, you could just go to that neighborhood and experience all that. And, well, I think, a, and a, those guys were curious like that. You oh, know, they were, and apparently, apparently, Let's did one of the best jobs because I guess what they were saying is that at that time. Like, there was no punk music recorded, right? But there was a shit ton of reggae music that had been recorded, and Let's was bringing it all over. And so word got out that Let's was spinning it at some club. I don't know what it was. That's what got everybody into it, everybody into all that stuff. I love stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you had to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, God, find, you know? Get some exposure to things. Yeah, yeah I read this yeah. g- great biography of the Beatles, and, like, there was a story about how, like, when John Lennon, no, no, it wasn't, it was George and Paul, I think, and they were, you know, they were 14 or 15 and just trying to start play guitar. And one of them came back and said, I heard there's a guy over, like, in the blah, blah, you know, across London that knows how to play a B7 chord. Oh, wh- what? <laughs> yeah. And they got on a, like, bus, tra- you know, it took an hour and went and knocked on this guy's door. And this kid, this guy comes to the door, like, can I help you? He's like, they say you know I can play a B7. Like, well, yeah. He's like, we well, might showing us. Oh, my God. They had to literally spend an afternoon oh to learn the B7 God. chord. That, but I love that pursuit. Yeah. That pursuit, yeah. man. That yeah. is awesome. Exactly. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, number eight for you. Number eight, Water from a Vine Leaf by William Orbit off the album Strange Cargo. You told me about this. Because if I were trapped on a desert island and wanted to have a beach party for one, this would be the soundtrack. Ooh. Yeah. Very high praise. Yeah, it's the kind of thing you, you know, you just take do a little Molly and just dance all night. Oh, okay. So on the desert island you got ten singles <laughs> yeah. and, and oh, a hit of just, yeah, and a hit of Molly. Yeah, and it was a <laughs> and it's it's like where some Molly washed up, it was dumped off a car a boat. Oh shit, don't let them get the Molly. <laughs> And there's just Molly, and there's all kinds of drugs, and there's just... And, and my luck would be like, fuck Molly Ringwald, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> if you're not going to reenact 16 candles with me, I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> not that kind of Molly. She's just going to be trouble, man. <laughs> you got to live on the same island together, you know? <laughs> is that a hawk? That's a hawk. There he is. You're the hawk. Or a falcon. Or it's a hawk. Ooh, he's pretty big. Yeah. So we're getting Sweet out, the, out the outdoors. Okay, so number seven for number me. Number seven for you. Watusi Rodeo by the, Gant, by the band Guadalcanal Diary. It was a twangy band back in the 80s, and I loved it because it had just kick-ass twang and got this crazy drum beat, crazy drum beat. And to let you know, on my top ten, the way I kind of did these is there's obviously way more bands that I like and everything, but I kept thinking... Here are the songs that literally, if I played it once, I would pick the needle up and start it again. Donna. <laughs> Donna. Hi, Donna. I would pick the needle up and start it again. I could play that over and over and over. I got to admit, you know, and I don't know anything uh, except uh, th- th- I know who the band was. Um, yeah. I got to say, you know, that band name to me is just right up there with like Mission of Burma. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, I almost put Mission of Burma. The, uh, the what's that song? Uh I'll tell my revival. I can't remember the name of the song now, but there's they did this one just almost almost made the list if I could remember the name of it. Our our the, the Venn diagram between our top ten lists is like eons apart. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. I like that. Don't I you? love it. All right, you ready? Hold What's on. This? Nine, ten, nine, eight, seven. Okay. Number seven. Will the wolf survive? Los Lobos. Off. How yes. will the wolf survive? When I first heard this song, I crashed my car, reverted to a feral state, and lunged into a dark forest howling at the sky in the pale moonlight. Oh, man. We've had a podcast about it. That is is great. Well, I mean, as we've said, those guys are one of the greatest American bands, and I don't believe, I think the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a bunch of bullshit, but... If anybody deserves to be in, it's them. Oh, they will. They'll get in. Yeah, yeah. 
Who cares? You know, I bet they don't I've, care. I've been making jokes here lately, going, going. You know, like uh, Janet Jackson's in the Rockwood Hall of Fame, but the MC Vive isn't. I mean, like going, like you know, you know, Dion oh, they're not. Dion, no, they're not in it. Uh, MC Five isn't in it. Well, I'm uh, sure Death isn't in there. Hell no, they're not in there. Death, you know. They only, I mean, the boy, I just found out about them like a year oh, or two ago. Oh, well, I, me, punk, me uh, too. I watched a documentary, and that's how I yeah, found. Was, I didn't know who the hell they were. Three like were they three black? Three brothers black? Yeah, proto punk. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and did this, and I remember like they were like if you saw that documentary, they're going, Death in the right name, and it's like. Yeah, man, that's the name we gotta go with. That says it all. <laughs> yeah, that, like, yeah, that's that's my kind of that's my kind of attitude. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, no, no. That one, and that's what I love about regionalism, is that you do find out. And that's there's a there's a, a place here called End of an Air Records, and they do a really really great job of finding a lot of those like one album wonder bands that they'll find out from some area that. You know, literally, like what? Maybe a hundred people know of, and uh, and some of them, to be honest with you, when I get a hold of them, I'm like, eh, not all that great. But that death is pretty badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. So, uh, oh, you're number six. Is yeah, this your number six? Uh, okay. So, uh, we just keep. I keep. <laughs> what is this dude mowing up here? Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number six. Uh, Radio Clash by the Clash. I just think it's one of the greatest singles made because I love the claps and the beat. And when I watched the documentary, even though they're from England, it was shot in New York City and it just felt like a, like New York City. The only one that rivals it would be Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Is this a run-on sentence? It is a run-on <laughs> sentence. Yes, yes. <laughs> I feel a little pressure here that you actually wrote out, you know, full sentences and I wrote up like four words. <laughs> What are the four words? No, that was it. Love the claps and the beat. <laughs> Five words. <laughs> no fair. No fair. Okay, number six for you. Can't you hear me knocking by the Rolling Stones off Sticky Fingers? Oh yeah. Once upon a time in a nor- in a. Once upon a time in a dark New Orleans bar, I asked a woman I just met to marry me because she told me to play this on the jukebox. Oh, my God. For real? Yeah. Was her name Farrah Fawcett? No, it wasn't Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> She's like, get the fuck out of here. Play the fucking song and shut your goddamn mouth. And I'm like, I want her even more now. <laughs> that's a New Orleans. That's, that's, a, that's a New Orleans girl right there. Oh, yeah? Just shut, fucking put it on. God damn it. your fucking mouth and buy me a drink. <laughs> Then go away until I want another one. Get it back over here. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's the best Rolling Stones song to me. Because it's the only one that's got a jam in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like seven minutes long, and it's got that, that out. And that was kind of a mistake. Like, they, they, were, he didn't know, they didn't know they were going to... The, the tape just kept rolling, and they didn't end it, and then... Keith goes into vamp, and then oh Mick, really? Mick Taylor goes into that just that incredible. Bobby Keys, you know, yeah, and, yeah. Got, and they all just go into this long kind of sort of Santana esque kind of outro. And it's just perfect, man. Mick Taylor, I just always love that guy as a guitar player. Yeah, he he was pretty amazing, and I don't know if you saw that. You know, he left. The Stones, because he said, oh, "I I want to do something else." And I remember, yeah, and he couldn't, I, and he couldn't hang with Keith. I know, and I remember like, Keith, like a couple of years later, kind of ripped on his ass. Goes, "Really wanted to do something else?" Uh, and what, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what's right. that mean? <laughs> yeah, I want to say, I want to live is what I want to do. And I was like, "Oh man, you know, Bobby Keys though." I, I saw a documentary on him. You know, he's from Lubbock, right? And Jesus, that guy could hang with Keith unfortunately he Mad was man. oh yeah man Mad man yeah oh yeah just out of his freaking mind i you know there's there's certain people out there that can do i hate to say this but can do heavy drugs and fucking live you know lemmy was one lemmy you know every time you know i think Grohl said the first time he met lemmy every time anybody met lemmy and Grohl said this he was like he just goes hey man you want to do some crystal meth and he was like yeah. uh, no no uh, Okay, I'll drink whiskey with you, even though it's, you know, like, you know, nine in the morning. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, but he was like, oh, here, just do some crystal meth. It's like, Jesus, kid, man, God dang. Worked for him. It did. Hey, man, the guy was in a band called Motorhead. 
What are you expecting? He's living Dude, the dream. Did you ever listen to his, first, his band before that? Hawkwind, wasn't that yeah. Hawkwind? They I, were I, really interesting. That's what I hear. They I never, were like a proto prog kind of. Yeah, yeah. They had this kind of Amazon woman that danced topless and painted herself silver. I can't think of it. They were wild. I mean, they were like this kind of. Was Farrah Fawcett? No, it wasn't Farrah Fawcett. God dang it. She's I want every story to come back to Farrah Fawcett. Now. Well, I mean, just keep trying. Right. Even a blind pig finds an acre and every now and then. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. That's okay. I don't yeah, care. you know what I mean. Yeah, okay. Okay, so this is going to be number five. Number five. Number five. This, I don't know if this is going to be on your list, but this artist might be on your list. Okay, Heroes by David Bowie. Because love, it's one. the synth, to me, as much as it is, it's the synthesizer that Eno's using in that thing in the background. Just kind of, na, 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 well, What did you actually write down? What did you write? The synth from Eno in the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Send us over. Okay, my number five. <laughs> you think I'm extrapolating and just pulling out of my ass? No, that's those are my six words that I wrote. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, I boy. like. I I don't want. I it's, I'm pacing myself, man. Yeah, I just I can't write that much, you know. I can leave something. Yeah, for, you only got so many for, words. For other, in. other 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 spots in my life, I need to pull that stuff out. I see. You know. I see. I yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, I got it. No, I hear yeah. you. Go ahead. What's it's, it's a longevity thing, man. That would have been. You know what? If I'd have thought of that, I would. That probably would have been on my top ten. I, I thought that maybe because we were talking about earlier if we'd have the same artist, and I go, well, one of the same song, but I could see us maybe having the same artist. That is one of my favorite. That's my. I really love but, that song. And I'm vastly between... And the, I don't understand. And I, there's just something about it. I don't know what it is. I, yeah, I do, too. It's I, I know what you mean. I think they captured... I think they actually captured, like, what was going on in Berlin right then. And, yeah. You know, and it was it, just it, gloomy, just weird kind of... Something about how it just... It just it's just... Nah, nah, nah. I mean, there's no... Robert Fripp, you know. I mean, there's no break in it. I mean, it's just this... Because that's was, Robert Fripp doing that back, that... Buzz. Is that is that it? That's Robert. That's, oh, that's, I thought it was more the synthesizer. Robert Fripp doing his Frippertronics, whatever God. that thing he did. Yeah, you know it doesn't. Say, you know the guy from King Crimson. Yeah, is like doing this complimentary sort of just droning. Uh. I love Man. that song. No, I love that song. Yeah, That's I, like, I almost did Blue Jean. Blue Jean's another one I can play over and over again. But Heroes is just one of those ones. And, and by the way, I got to do this. A shout out to my friend Bowie. Billy Bake. Billy is the one that turned me on to that song. It's just like once I heard that, it's like oh. And that shit. album cover. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, back when albums were cool to look at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People it's, just weird, it's just weird, stark kind of. Oh yeah. You know. All right, number five for for you. Number five for me. I, I'm going with the hits. Sultans of Swing, Dire Straits, off the Dire Straits album. This intelligent, unlikely smash hit with its noirish literary flair was as unique as it was catchy and once again sent the Stratocaster, the Stratocaster to the stratosphere. Oh my God. Yeah. Kaboom. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the most unique albums I ever heard. Remember that? I mean, that song was just like. Nothing else he'd heard. I mean, well, at that time, I mean, from, yeah. yeah, it really was like nothing I'd ever heard. And plus, especially in the context of like, Oh, what was it coming out around that time frame? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. And you, another thing about like Knopfler, it's like, and, and this is what Donna has said, and it's right. It's like, he's one of those guys that you hear, it's like Hendrix, you hear that guitar coming and you go, you go, Mark Knopfler. You just know right then and there that's who it is. But and that was, that was out of nowhere because there was, it was a lot of, that was during the time that like, Journey and all that sort of crap was out there, and, and a yeah. little bit of punk had started to come in. But then this was like, I don't know what you call it. It's like minimalistic Americana kind of. I don't know what you call it. Other than great, it's well, but you know awesome. he was such a great writer. He was a great writer. So yeah, you know yeah. that whole song's about a Dixieland band or something. That's you know he's he the well, theme in his writing is like it. it you know it's like. Things from the past, you know, that yeah. are worth thinking about. Like, you know, he would he would write these. He was an English major professor. Oh, I think. Was? I think he was I an English know. teacher. You know, so he had this he had this way with words. <laughs> Not like me. I mean, I way with six words. Yeah, and then you know the weird thing about Knopfler is, of course, you know that he became so identified with that stratic that out of phase mm -hmm. number two position on a five switch. Toggle switch fender, out of phase, pickup sound, that icy, 
you know, yeah. that dry, kind of dry, icy sort of spare. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, and, yeah. and then, you know, like most guitar players hone their tone, they hone the tone they mm-hmm. start out with. They don't just, you know, they don't just take a detour. And then he goes, you know, for uh, Brothers in Arms with uh, Dad, Dad, uh, Whistle? I want my MTV. You know that that oh, album. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so he called Billy Gibbons and like, oh really? I want your tone. I want that. I want to know how you get. And Billy just told him a bunch of bullshit because he's like, I'm not giving anybody. <laughs> you know how well, Billy Gibbons would say, yeah, well, "How's guy, your tone?" There's a guy like, oh, uh, use a yeah, just use a tube screamer pedal and uh, turn it to seven. Well, he claimed and... all his picks were made from Mexican pesos. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And like his strings oh, yeah. were from the melted bumper of a '57 cat. You know, he just wouldn't give. <laughs> and and Martin Offer said, yeah, he was. I could tell he was just bullshit. You know, so I just had to sort of figure it out. But you know, then he got he goes into that dr- sort of. Next thing he's playing a Les Paul with a saturated kind of, oh yeah, you know, oh, hawk. Yeah. And he did sound like Billy Gibbons yeah. on that. You but, know, what's that one song they did? Uh, Tunnel of Love. Tunnel of Love. I love that song. Yeah, Tunnel of Love. Yeah. But yeah. that first album is just. Uh, I mean, there's just nothing like. You know, it. I saw I saw I saw Dire Straits one time, and this is the Zoo Amphitheater in Oklahoma City, and I'm and and I'm we're kind of far back right it's in this little amphitheater we're kind of far back and we're kind of fucked up and i kept going man that that rhythm guitar player because his i think his brother was a rhythm guitar player in the band I and i kept that. going that doesn't look like his brother who is that and i go i kind of i think i know that guy and he probably stops and goes and i want to introduce our rhythm guitar player just decided to come on with this on this uh this tour eric clapton <laughs> and i was just like what <laughs> And Clapton just went on tour with him. Because Knopfler was his guitar player for a while. Yeah. Oh, he was? I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Well, no, and it was just like... I'm pretty sure and that was that. That's why I said they go, that too. Uh, but it was like you were kind of like far away, which would be far away and be a little bit drunk. I was like, I'm not really sure. And then it's like, and you know, and it, yeah, Clapton would, never did. I don't think he did a single solo. I think it was just, he was just rhythm guitar. Wow. Just hanging out on the tour with him, man. Wow. Yeah, it was awesome. I'm pretty sure about that Mark Knopfler played with... <laughs> That's crazy to think that, but maybe he did. I don't know. He had a, yeah, well, that's weird. That's yeah, something. Yeah. All right. So, oh, are you num- number four? Number four. Number four for me, Pump It Up by Elvis Costello and the Attractions. All right. It's out of the world. This beat came down, hitting into the heart, the heart of your rhythm, the rhythm of your soul. It came and it grabbed me, it threw me around, it made me realize. That I'm just making this up. <laughs> okay, I don't see. Uh, I don't see any dots on the page, Brian. And and it's like a Whitman poem. And the birds, and the man on the lawnmower, and the chairs by the pool, and the working men and under the mines, and Calabunga and Hoochie Coochie. <laughs> Unless that's written in Chinese, there ain't enough marks down there for that. It's written in uh, in only invisible ink that only these glasses can see. God damn it! You ju- you doubt me? You doubt me? Yes. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay, number pump it up. That's the only. Did you just? That's it. You pump I, I, it up. I, I, I just put just a killer beat. <laughs> Yes, that's pump it up, Elvis Costello. The first time I heard that, no, By the way, most of my songs in here have hand claps in them. I love hand claps. Yeah, I do too. And I love xylophones. That's one of two songs by Elvis Costello I like. Oh yeah, that's it. You're not a big fan of his. There's something about him that irritates the fuck out of me. Really? There's something about him that I just fucking love. Well, you know. No, I, I get it. I get. I, I don't get. I don't get him because a lot of people like him, and I'm just like that guy. Just uh, there's something about it. Just whiny little <laughs> screechy little maggot bitch. You know. I mean, but he's great. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I get. It. I get you. Well, you know the fa- infamous story about him, don't you? What the SNL thing? What? No, you're gonna hate him once you hear about this. All right, I'll tell you. Go ahead, tell me. Well, he got drunk in a bar, like. Bonnie Bramlett, he was drinking with some people. Bonnie Bramlett was one of them, and he got drunk. Delaney and Bonnie? Or is that somebody yeah, else? Yeah, okay, okay. They got in an argument about something. Uh huh. And he called Ray Charles. He said, Ray Charles is a blind, ignorant N word. Oh, uh, I think I've heard that. And Bonnie Bramlett punched him off his fucking bar stool. Oh, really? 
There's well, your hero. It, okay, he deserved that. Oh yeah, he had that. And, and by the way, when, I think he's. And by the way, I just put him on here as a song. I didn't say he was you, my hero. <laughs> did you put a Confederate flag in his name too? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just Don't saying. Don't apologize. <laughs> I'm just saying that good the, Elvis pup, the pup, hero. It up, pup it up is like the American flag that I love so much. I love it, love it, love it. <laughs> there you go. That's it. There you go. That's it. Okay, okay number number four for you without a, um, you know. And, and by the way, speaking along those lines of the uh, the Confederate flag, I did see that uh, 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 the governor of... Florida said they wanted to fly the flags at half mass because Rush Limbaugh died this week. That's because they can't raise the flags with his fat ass on them <laughs> to full mass. Like, motherfucker, stop! Hey, you know that joke? I, I'm, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna say this joke I put on Facebook. Hey, Brian, you know what the difference between Rush Limbaugh and the Hindenburg is? No, Dave, what is the difference? <laughs> One of them is a flaming Nazi gas bag, and the other one's a blimp. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you said you didn't want to get into politics. I've been staring clear. No, no, I mean, my thing with Rush Limbaugh is like, you're going to only lower the flag if it's a the Nazi swastika flag. You can lower that one halfway. Yeah. Well, that's but, Mississippi. But the, <laughs> but the American flag, fuck you, fuck that fat fuck. <laughs> but, but but I can't even get into it because there's another there's another idiot right behind him. I mean, you know, right wing politics and religion are both kind of like you can make a shit ton of money off just pandering to the dumbest goddamn white crackers. Period. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Enough of that. That's Number four. Yeah. You you told me. I did. Didn't I? You told. Me. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Number four for me. Okay. Here we go. Red House. Jimi Hendrix off of Smash Hits because. If God played the blues, it would sound just like this. I agree with that, man. One of the best guitar solos ever. <sighs> Guy sums up in two minutes and 30 seconds or something the entire history of the blues. Yeah. You know. It, 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 Hendrix is one of those ones, I, I don't know if you probably like this, I can hear that anywhere. And as soon as I hear it, it's like that guitar sound to this day goes inside. I mean, it is just like... Oh my God, you know. But, yeah. You know that guy practiced. I mean, th they said that, and everybody said this. He carried a guitar with him everywhere. Yeah, the movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He walked down the Sleep street with it. Yeah. playing with it. Be, yeah. They said to be cooking breakfast and to be slung over his shoulder, and when the extra cooking, it take it up and play stuff. Yeah, he was like all yeah, the time. He was consumed with it. That's what all the great ones are. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, but that he, song, it's like um, you know, because you know, it used to be him being kind of wild, but. Like it's weird because this song is r just kind of restrained. I mean, it's just it's just like a sort of a straight up twelve bar blues. Yeah, with like the tastiest fucking guitar solo on it. Man, I mean, it's like he just wrote the book on that. That's it. That's it. Stop. Period. That's it. Well, right he, the thing is, he was immersed in the blues. I mean, he knew all that yeah. stuff. I mean, playing with Little Richard, you know, and all this, uh, but. On top of that, though, he had this speaking of tone. I mean, uh, he took that that level up of just overdrive to where you just hit a barely hit a note and it's like and it's like going on on everything. I mean, he, he's probably the first guy that made feedback a, a part a of his part of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, he could control. you standing there. Oh yeah, woo, woo, woo. yeah. And man, that dude, he's like Chuck Berry, like these hands that are like yeah, he's spider know, hands, like, just like could wrap all around stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, man. all the, all his girlfriends happened to mention how big his hands were. <laughs> I'm sure they did. <laughs> hands, <laughs> big hands, big gloves. There you we know, are. There we are. Saying. There we are, man. Okay, number three for you. Number three from number Brian. Number three, history lesson part two by the Minutemen. I don't know if you know the song or not. This, this this has already been longer than the song, isn't it? No, 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 no. It would normally it would be. Normally it would be. Normally it would be. But what I love about this one is it told their story of how much they love punk rock, about how they would drive from uh, from Long Beach uh, down to uh, up to Hollywood uh, to go in there and listen to X and all these people play and everything. It was uh, yeah, just crazy. Yeah, so. It, it just a great storytelling, and it's a real, it's melodic, it's it's a acoustic guitar, you know. It's unlike what they normally did. Yeah, 
All right. So listen to that sometime. I will. Yeah. I'll listen to your top ten. I'll listen to yours. You've already heard all mine. I haven't. I told you that. Aretha Franklin, I've never heard of that song. Yeah, but the rest of them have. These are hits, man. Most of mine are hits, actually. You know, but there you go. Hey, man, you're bourgeois. a hit maker. You're a hit maker. I'm, bourge- I'm a hit faker. Listener. I'm a hit faker. <laughs> All right. Oh, number three? Number three. Uh, number three for you, yes. Maybelline by Chuck Berry off The Great 28. Sorry, Bruce. This is, this is and will always be the best song ever about cars, women, and the perils of love. I love that. It's a, uh, it's a top three and a diss. And a what? A diss. Against Bruce. Yeah. Against the boss. Yeah. 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 Well. Apparently you got it. It's, it's called passive aggressive. I like it. You, yeah. you You just took passive aggressive to an art form that is almost tear worthy. Yeah, thanks. It was awesome. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's a, you know, I use it sparingly. Yeah, I know. It's just a little seasoning for the just, stew. Just bring it out. Just whenever. Just whatever. It's like I mean, sa- I got it's nothing. Like, it's I, like saffron. Just a little bit here. A little saffron. bit there. Yeah. It's just like that's, <laughs> that's the saffron of music reviews. Right there. And I mean, I, I, you know, I got no beef against the boss. Yeah. But I just, you know, I was just thinking like, you know, there's like, I want to die with you, Wendy, on the streets tonight. And then, and then there's, you know. As I was the motivate over the hill, saw Maybelline in the Coup de Ville. Cadillac roll on and, over and the road. And the fact that he's made it motivating. Yeah. Motivating over the hill. Yeah, yeah. You know, and there's, you know, Chuck. I, I mean, a, I got to tell you. Chuck I, is like your, you know, the, Chuck is my Elvis Costello. I was about to say, I was about to say, I was about to like, do you know the stories about Chuck? Yeah, yeah don't Chuck's you? problematic. And, you know, and that's a bad part is because. Chuck is like a, like an Ike Turner. It's like their 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 level their 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 chapter in rock and roll history is non paralleled, right? But their chapter as a human being is <laughs> like, also unparalleled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like oh man, because you look at him going, oh, why did you do that? Oh no, no, no. And yeah. if y'all if y'all don't know that much about Chuck Berry, just watch the uh, what's that show called? A movie Rock and Roll. Um, uh, oh, with yeah, with with, with Keith Richards. Uh, oh, oh, hail, hail, rock hail, and hail, roll. rock and roll. Just watch hail, hail, rock and Good roll. Good movie. Boy. You don't even have to watch the first of it. Just watch towards the latter part when they're trying to play and watch the way that Chuck Berry, who is Keith Richards' idol, how he treats him in this. To me, Chuck Berry is the greatest. He's awesome. Songwriter. He's did, the best lyricist there's ever been in, in, did, for in rock and roll. Did I tell that Chuck Berry song on one of these podcasts? I think so. Something about him showing up at the... That I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, like yeah. Bag yeah. of cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, no, number two. We're getting right. down to number it. Number two. Number two for Brian. Here we go. All right. This would be considered to me a hit. Me to hit. Smokestack Lightning by Hal and Wolf. That's one person... That I wish I would have had the chance to see, but I didn't. I didn't. But what gets me, and I actually wrote more on this one here, it starts off with Hubert Sumlin's cool guitar playing, and then goes right into Howlin' Wolf going, oh, and that, and just right into it. And I mean, it's like to me, that is just fantastic. That guitar to his voice, the sparing minimalistic sound of that whole song, and just, man, I just, I, I think that's. I never got to see Helen Wolf. I did get to see Hubert Sumlin one time. Yeah, me too. And uh, but I just I think anything Helen Wolf does, for as much as I loved Muddy Waters, Helen Wolf to me is he is the deal, the the blues deal. Yeah, I think so too. Did I tell you that I went to that Dockery Farm? Uh, Don and I went to Dockery Farm, and you could go back and there was a place back in there where you could actually push a button and they would start playing music, and you were standing there. Where Sunhouse, Charlie Patton, Robert Johnson, and Howlin' Wolf all hung out in this one spot, wow, and it was man. just like, it was just like mecca to walk into this little spot. Just, but Wolf to me is just the coolest guy because on top of that, he when he started playing music, he got to Chicago, realized he had not graduated from high school. I want to, so he would study in between sets at night, study, and wow. got his high school diploma. Wow, I didn't know and that. And he actually paid his band and paid their taxes. So when he paid him, it was all tax stuff, taxed out and everything. And, and the guy was just amazing. Just He's just just a heck of a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was, and he was, he was kind of a, uh, you know, 
talk about a guy that like embodied the whole. He embodied the whole hoodoo man image. You know, he was scary looking. And oh, he scary. was a huge guy. And he did. I think he knocked. Hubert someone like out during a gig one time. He probably did. If if you but he used to this big that big summit used to go climb the stage curtain. Oh and yeah. Go, oh yeah. You know, just, yeah. I remember Robert Palmer, who's like one of the greatest writers of not not the singer, but the the writer Robert Palmer from from Arkansas wrote for the New York Times. He wrote. He said the first time I saw Helen Wolf, he said he was climbing up on curtains. Yeah. And jumping around. He goes going around on, on his knees, barking and yelling and doing all this stuff. He goes. He goes. That's the first time I saw him. He was up there on the curtains on his knees jumping around he goes and he was 55 years old and it was like holy smoke can you imagine yeah. what this guy was like young it's like oh my uh, yeah man i mean you know he love to see those guys you know uh, you know you hear a story like his mom thought that blues was that was back to the old blues as devil's music mm -hmm. hubert someone tells a story that they were back in mississippi and that they ran into his mom they were in some town and his mom was just, they were in the middle of this, the downtown. His mom was there and, and, you know, Helen saw her and he goes, oh, mama, mom, mom. And he, and he gave her a hundred dollar bill. He goes, here, here's this. And Hubert said he was with him and she just took that doubt, that hundred dollar bill and just threw it down. She goes, that's devil's money. And just walked off. He goes, and Hubert, you could tell Hubert was like, man, I don't know what the heck that, because it was just the most heartbreaking thing to see that. Yeah. Well, well, that's that's the blue. That is that the is the blues. <laughs> you know, if you I mean, they weren't bullshitting. If you, you ever, if you ever get a chance to listen to the Chess Records, it's a uh, it's a uh, and I have it. It's a three CD set, but there's a lot of him talking in between some of these songs, and he starts explaining about where some songs came from and about how you get the blues and all this, and it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, probably for me, just hearing his voice sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I thought never really heard him talk. So oh man, it's like. You know, boy, that's the way. You know, you know, you know, Sam Phillips. He goes, yeah. He goes, the great. And he talked about the greatest singer. He goes, there's a greatest singer, and blah blah blah. And people go, you mean Elvis? He goes, no. Helen Wolf was the greatest singer. That's who I'm. That's who I wish could have been. That was a guy. That was it. I mean, one of my, my favorite lyric about how about him is uh, where he's, he's doing a song. Is it him or is it? But yeah, you want it is. Water? No, the guy says, uh, "Hey Wolf, where you going with that long knife?" And like. I'd much rather go to your funeral and you go to mine. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. I wanted water and she brought me gasoline. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, 300 pounds of heavenly joy. Just Oh, yeah. There's something, there's boom, something unique boom, about boom, Hubert Sumlin's boingy. He that, had some real well, boingy kind of sound. I don't know what. It was so different. He had this kind of real sort of playful oh, yeah. kind of. I don't know what it was. He was there was something unique about about Hubert. You it know? was minimalistic, uh, but just sounded so cool. It was just, you know, I'm sure there's a million guitar players out there and trying to emulate that tone. Speaking of tone, emulate that tone. And I bet if you ask Hubert what his tone was, he'd probably like, yeah. <laughs> Man, there you go. There's your tone, man. There's your tone, your tone right tone. there. I got your oh. tone hanging low. <laughs> Uh, okay, so number uh, number dos number for you. Number dos. Okay, Ramble On, Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin 2. If oh. you can write a perfect rock song about a hero's journey through Middle Earth to save a girl oh so fair from Gollum, the evil one, then you can do anything. <laughs> that is true, man. <laughs> <laughs> Gollum, the evil one. <laughs> That's a perfect song to me. Oh, man, that Ramble is. On, it's just. Well, they were such a, I mean, you, you, you look up the name rock and roll band. Nah, that's yeah. it. I mean, when you see Plant in those little shirts that are like <laughs> I Dream of Genie shirts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and wearing it without, a, without even a hint of no care. Just like, that's it, man. Yeah, and Jimmy and his dragon oh, yeah. suit. And, you know, yeah, that was, I mean, yeah, the greatest, you know, I mean. And they can get away with it because there's a lot of other bands that you start listening to that some of shit, and it's that living in the Shire Middle Earth crap that just sounds so horrible. Yeah, but, this, yeah, but they I, pulled it off. Yeah, I mean, you know, oh god, that's and it's you know that got he's just doing that little those little sixteenth notes. You know, it's just yeah, and the, you know, of course, a lot of that sound. You know, like Jimmy Page, you know, was a real was a real 
Musicians, musician. You know. Well, yeah, he did all that. He, you know, he did was a studio, session guy. Yeah, session musician. And played on like it's not unusual to oh, be yeah. loved by yeah. anyone. Yeah, and then he was kind of worried because he's like, "Well, do I want to stop my session work?" And they, they wanted to come to this band. He was like, "I don't know if I want to come to a band." Well, actually, I take it back. He went from session work. He apparently went from session work, then did an album that nobody bought. And then went back to session work, and then did jump over to the Yardbirds. Yeah, even the Yardbirds. Yeah. But I even think on the Yardbirds, whenever Zeppelin wanted him, he just didn't know if he like should leave the Yardbirds or not. Well, he put Led Zeppelin together. I thought. I thought oh, it was did? his deal. Oh, it was okay. You know. Well, I just know that he was afraid to kind of leave the Yardbirds. I think. For well, a bit. I mean, he had a good thing going. You oh, know, he, he, did? Had, he was making money as a session musician, and but you know, the guy was. Ambitious. He, he was. was really ambitious, yeah. you know. And so, you know, but I mean, that's, but actually, John Paul Jones is probably the most, you know, all of those bands like that, um, I think, you know, the Beatles and every band like that had one, like, kind of ringer musician who he, was, who he, he would play. Like, John Paul Jones was a real, you know, like, evidently the, like, the, the trained musician of the bunch, you know. Oh, like, yeah. Had a lot of, because, you know, he's, he put together some of the arrangements and, you know. Well, you need, you need, that I mean, it, it's weird you say this because, like I said, I just watched that Go Go's one and Charlotte Charlotte Coffee. She was a trained uh, classical pianist, yeah. And so when they got her, they were like all like hanging around. And she was like, "No, no, no, you want to do the chord progression like this, you know." And you need somebody because you, you that, that kind of tells you like, "All right, that's great, but we need to probably kind of do boom, boom, boom," you know. And I hear but, you. But, but if you got John Paul Jones sitting there doing that. Obviously, Bonham and Page were like, "Hell yeah, yeah. let's do this, man! Yeah, let's yeah. do this." You know, I mean, the, you know, and every I love all these pictures of Page. You know, these videos I've seen with him with a freaking cello bow. You know, playing his guitar. I mean, just hilarious! It's so awesome, man. Yeah, those yeah. big flare leg pants with stars on them and yeah. hot platform shoes. Yeah, he was the dark master. Oh, you know, and all man. that kind of. You know, that that's you know that's all pretty. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, my bu- buddy of mine, good friend from France, and he said, and he moved here in like 1989 or something, and he said, oh, when I, big music fan, oh, when I moved to the United States and listened to the radio, it's just Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin. If it's not Led Zeppelin, it sounds like Led Zeppelin. <laughs> like, oh, Aerosmith, sounds like, you know, like every band sounded like Led Zeppelin up until like 1990, you know, or 19, yeah, they blew up. Well, what's his name died, and then uh, good, they did a good thing and just went away. You no, know, that's that was smart. That was smart, and plus they'd push it. And like I always, love people like, why don't they get back together? It's like, you know, no. man, yeah, you, you've had something that was perfection. It's never gonna be. It's never gonna be better. Well, Robert Plant don't want any part of that. No, no, he's going on to that. I mean, I love that that guy has just. Ex- it's weird because Jimmy Page has basically become an archivist for all of Led Zeppelin's. He's just, he's like the museum guy. He's yeah. never really moved on musically. But R- Robert Plant's like, man, that was. He did that one great album with Allison Krauss? Or, no, uh, not Allison Krauss. Yeah, uh, yeah Allison Krauss. Was it? Yeah, that's a great album. That is, and, John, so and John Paul Jones, he's produced what? The Butthole Surfers? Heart. Heart. Or he, he was in on the heart, with Heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, and, but he did, he uh, got him them Crooked Vultures with a uh, homie and a uh, oh, Grohl right. and. Uh, that's right. You know, I mean, he's like obviously like jumping onto anything. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, he's just like he's not sitting back and 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 you're right though about Paige. It's like and but everybody, I guess everybody has their own drive. I guess. Yeah. You know, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you know, I did ever tell you because and you you probably saw him whenever Plant was living here because uh, he was dating uh, Patty Griffin. Don and I were at uh, at. Uh, Yard Dog one time, and John Langford was there going to play. Going to play. John, a couple other people were playing in Yard Dog. He had an art show going there. And so, you know, we're talking about Yard Dog. It's like, you know, people kind of our age-ish kind of there. And Robert Plant walked in with Patty Griffin. You would have cracked up. All these girls, like Donna's age and stuff, and they were all like this bit. I mean, he walked in, and every girl in there was like, 
pushing the tits up. <laughs> and if Donna was right here, she'd be going, yeah, I was doing that. <laughs> we're all Still like, got it. Get a look in there like, oh, man. I mean, they were like, I mean, he walked in and there wasn't a seat. At that point, there was no other guys in that fucking room, man. We were all second rate. Every girl is watching because he walked from the front all the way to the back, and every girl, just fo- girl, lady, just followed him all the way around. And, just, and the whole time they kept sitting there, and you would just, you would see this stuff. You'd see heads turning back and like looking at him. And yeah. Look at him. Oh, man, it was hilarious. Like when Farrah Fawcett walks by. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how you, that, learn, that's how you do that, Brian. That's, how, that's how you do the callback. Do. <laughs> hey, learn from the pros, kid. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm out. Oh, number one. We're down to number one. Number one. You're number one. Okay, Brian's number one. All right, my number one. It's a song called Can't Hardly Wait by The Replacements. It is, wow, one of the later ones. It was on, it was on the on, the, uh, on Tim. Place to Meet Me? Uh, well, they wrote it on Tim, but then they actually put it on Please to Meet Me. I believe it's what oh. it is. It is, and, and on and. They wrote it on Tim, but on Please to Meet Me, Dickinson produced Please to Meet Me, and he wound up putting Memphis Horns on it, and I think that's what did a lot to it. But it's weird because if you listen to the progression of the lyrics back from Tim to this one, uh, it's a lot darker on the Tim one. It's almost like a guy's trying to play suicide, and so it's a lot darker lyrics, and they get a little bit not as dark later on. But I don't know what it is with that. There are certain songs that hit certain people, at a certain time, and you just hear it, and you just go, holy shit. And I can tell you right now, when I hear that, and I heard it, when they were here, they got back together, and they played uh, Austin City Limits, and I went there. Who we talking about? I've, I've forgotten. I know, really. Uh, Dwight Yoko. Oh, Dwight Yoko. And, uh, and so uh, he was uh, opening up for Fair Fawcett. And uh, <laughs> so... I was there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when you heard it, you could tell everybody that it just related to that. We were all just like... You're almost crying. You know, it's just it's just so badass. I couldn't tell you why other than I just love that band. Uh, just a bunch of crazy drunks. Now, to be honest with you, in the Chuck Berry, Elvis Costello range, I read the book that they have out there on called The Trouble Boys. And boy, you talk about a band that fucking ruined every opportunity to, that was ever given to them. And just in mass, in mass, ruined every fucking opportunity it was those guys. I mean, you know, they, uh, Ben Mont Trench, Ben Mont Tench, the keyboard player for, uh, for, uh, Tom Petty lobbied for them to open up for Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. And they got on there and they would just fuck up every show. And I think one time they were playing at some, at some fair, like in Iowa or something. And Tom Petty walks up and, and Tommy Stinson is sitting there. And, and, and Tommy's like, why do you even give a shit about this sort of stuff? I mean, what are you getting out of this? And Tom Petty looked at me and goes, oh, well, today I'm going to get about $250,000 out of this. <laughs> it was just like, Tommy's like, you know, he just rather fuck up everything than try to make a couple of bucks. But those fucking guys, they never even learned how to drive. They never learned how to drive or anything. I mean, it's just like, for as much as I love them, when you read that book, it kind of bums you out. It's like, God dang, man. I mean, just... I mean, they're better now because they were total blown, blown out alcoholics. They're better now. But when you read about it, it's like every opportunity was given to them. They just totally just ruined it. Just ruined it. Yeah. But wrote great records. Well, that's a Thomas Pynchon sentence right there. There you go. Just a whole chapter. One hole. One hole. That was called a run on and a run off and a run back on sentence. Yeah. And, and the runs. Yeah. And getting the runs. And- <laughs> Run the hose and run the, running the bulls. Run DMC. Pap, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stopped in your tracks. What? Stopped in your tracks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Just bored. Huh? You were just bored. What? Who? Are, uh, what? Who are you? What? Who are we? What? Where are, where, where, where are we? Still, why, why are we I? still on? Are who, we still on? Where, where, uh, are we still on? Okay. Where, where am I? Okay. Numero freaking Uno for Mr. Dave Kendall yep. is. This is a true number one. Compared to what? Les McCann and Eddie Harris off a of Swiss movement. If you held a gun to my head and made me pick a favorite song, it would be this provocative, hard hitting, funky kick in the gut. I've never heard of that. I sent it to you once. 
You did? Yeah, and you wrote back, thanks. You didn't listen to it. I'm sure I, I did. You didn't. No, you didn't. I'm sure I you're did. not you don't you know, you don't cotton to jazz. It's jazz. Oh, man. if it was jazz, I probably turned it off pretty quick. Well, I just know me. I know me. Now that I know that you love that song, I'll listen to at least more than five seconds. You want to hear great lyrics? You want to hear great beat? You want to no, hear funk? No, funk, no. Funk. I know you don't because you're like the most no. Caucasian. No, no. Three forty-two. What? 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 I'm looking you're, at the time. What are you, 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 you're mocking my crackerness. What the hell, man? What? You're mocking my crackerness. Cracking her. Crackerness. Oh yeah, you're cra- <laughs> you're oh you're. <laughs> Man, it's like they, you know that old saying. Man, uh, he got on that like white on rice, but we say, man, he's on that like white on Brian. <laughs> this is how white I am. You spill milk on me; those are the dark spots. Yeah, I mean, when they say do that, I mean the polka is as close as you get to funk. I need SPF a million. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think there was a. I go, there I, a, go I go to I go to uh, outdoor. Wasn't there an co- X Men? Wasn't there one of the mutants is like you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's the guy on Logan. I think his name was See Through or something like no, that. No, he was on Logan, and yeah. he said. Uh, yeah, I, I remember. Like, I go to outdoor concerts instead of walking around asking for drugs. I walk around asking for SPF. Come on, man, forty five SPF forty five. I need I need seventy five seventy five. They Come think on. you are blow. <laughs> <laughs> you walk by people trying. To, <laughs> oh wait, that's just a that's a real white guy. That's not a that's not a walking <laughs> that's a bag wa- of Peruvian. walking bag of blow. That's not a walking bag of Peruvian. Yeah, they call plate. me pa- they call me powder. <laughs> yeah, powder man. Yeah, yeah you're th- his, his, his name the name is Bino Al Bino. <laughs> I'm the missing winter brother. <laughs> Look out, bro. The sun's creeping in. <laughs> it, it, it's funny because I'll mow the lawn in the summertime and then I strip down and go jump in the pool. And Donna goes, Oh my God, Brian, you're going to jump in the pool naked. What, what if our neighbors look at you? I go, If they look at me jump in the pool, I go, They're going to burn their fucking retinas out when that sun shines off my white skin. <laughs> it's like they're going to bring me blind. <laughs> but I mean, the, the, the thing, you're white all the way to the soul. Oh, that hurts, bro. <laughs> no. That hurts. That's why I said it. Oh, that hurts. Well, by the way, just to let you know, Uh-oh. we're at we're at around Oh, no, now you minute, want to quit. That minute 15, and we're going to do this funk thing. So I'll do the funk the next time. Next time it's going to be the funk. And then I will show I will show you. I I will I will I will I will throw my whiteness from my for the funk into it. Battle down, boom, back, boom, back, boom, back, boom, back, dee, dee, dee. I love how to de- defend. I'm not that white. I'm not, I'm not that white. Uh, it's so easy. <laughs> it's just so easy to pony. <laughs> I know, isn't it? I know. Isn't it? I know. Oh, I wait, was hold here, on. I was okay. sent here to torment you. Uh, 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 that's, uh, yeah, that's awesome. I know. That's you, awesome. Like, you, you got it coming. That's just I, karmic. Uh, what? What? This, oh wait! I acted, acted like I cared. <laughs> God, I was watching The Simpsons last night, and Apu's trying to explain to Homer how he's trying to work. Oh, never mind. It had to do with karmic imbalance, and like somebody was trying to talk him about karmic realignment, and Homer says, "You can't sell karmic realignment. That's all doled out portion by the cosmos." And he slams the door. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, you can. I am trying to sell to you the concept of karmic realignment. <laughs> you can't sell that. That's doled out by the cosmos in portions. Slam. <laughs> and he slams the door. Man, my favorite line is Homer. He goes, he goes, if we've ever, any, if we've ever learned he's eaten, he goes, if we've ever, ever learned anything from God, which we haven't. And it just goes on. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's even more. Did you listen to the meters? You yes, listen? I did. Yes, oh, I did. Now we're uh, talking. Funk, funkify your life. And bam, by the way, bam, by the way, well, I think we we might want to finish this up so that we can do the funk, funk on the next one. Okay. What? We should finish this one up so we can do funk on the next one. Yeah, and, it's, and I don't mean funk forty nine either. Yeah, yeah. Although it is pretty funky. Funk is pretty funky. But uh, yes, I did listen to the meters. Funkify your life. And here's what I here's what the thing is. I didn't realize 
they didn't, and it's a lot of funk bands like this. They didn't have much singing in there. It was like a lot more yeah. like, I mean, I did hear right. sing, but I heard a lot of a lot of instrumentals, and they were awesome. Yeah. Just awesome though, awesome. There's that song on there called "Same Old Thing," same old thing, same old thing. It starts out like that same. Almost no New Orleans song has any. Uh, you know, the lyrics on a New Orleans song are just there to just get to the. Oh yeah, no, but a lot of funk stuff. I mean, like right. most of them peak on their on their on their title because I'm here looking like this band I think called Lakeside. I love the title it was like more bounce to the ounce, <laughs> just like that sort of stuff. It's just like, well, I told you that I've I saw the Meters twice at Liberty Lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and both times, like for some reason, I just had it was like a first date. I mm-hmm. took a you know a woman there like on a first date. And like both times, it was like. Yeah. I mean, it was the best first date. It's like the, the absolute <laughs> peak of first dateism, <laughs> and like I'm just like, wow, the meters did all the work. Oh, they did. Yeah, the meters just you know yeah. because I just take some best wingman. So all of a sudden, you know, every girl would just be grinding into you, you know, like the meter. You can't. There's the meters, man. That just they just made women lose their minds. Yeah, Spanish fly music. It's it's uh yeah man. you know well, anyway the same old thing so they were they did a song called same old thing same old thing do the same old and the, supposedly like they were just jamming in the studio and Alan Toussaint walked in and said oh y'all just doing that same old thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're making a song out of it though yeah, all right now we'll uh I think we should do a whole funk thing and let's go ahead and set it up the next version will be funk yeah yeah unless we don't unless we Blow it off. Yeah, unless we just do it about something else totally. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, but funk. Let's do funk. I, I want to do funk because I I'm, I'm a big I'm a big fan of funk. Yeah, you're probably a bigger fan of funk than I am. I you just, know, it just like I tell you, it blew my mind that you know a lot of my friends are like, "What about funk?" I'm like, "How do you not? How do you not dig funk music?" And even for that matter, funk into disco music. I love I you love know? disco music. I do too. I love Donna's mom one time. She goes, you know, disco's great. Disco, disco makes people happy. And I thought it was like one of the best things I ever heard. Hey, man, anything to me that's got like a groovy bass line. Hell yeah. And, a, and a, you know, and in di- the pocket and drums and just. Oh, the, by the way, I told you I tried to figure out who said that they had almost a disco beat to drumming. It was Peter Buck was talking about Bill Berry from R.E.M., he oh, said that yeah. I, I was trying to figure out. We talked about this a couple co- podcasts yeah. ago, and I was trying to remember who that was. And so, uh, yeah. So anytime, wow. anytime you get that, I mean, it just ah. Oh, yeah, awesome. I mean, I mean, you know, if you, you go, you listen to James Brown drummers, and uh, and the, the guy from New Orleans is Zigaboo, Zigaboo Modal East man. I mean, he's he's like a part of the. He's not just background, man. That guy's he's part of the music. Uh, just his. I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that about uh, James because I want to talk about James a lot. Well, JB for sure. Well, that's funk for you. It is. That it is. is funk. It is. I mean, and the Meters and James Brown are you know you can't. That, that's and, and I love all the guys in James Band. They all wound up fired or getting quit and coming back two or three times. I mean, just this. Well, he was a rough guy at work. Ooh, for. yeah, five. Yeah, five. <laughs> <laughs> Mister Note five. And at the end of the night, he had he remembered exactly. I know. Him. Yeah. What okay. A, well, we'll get more of that because we're, we're, we're good God because we're, we're right here into uh, an hour and twenty now. And so uh, there we go. That's it. Okay. Uh, any uh, parting uh, parting uh, words? Other than I will say this: I will give me your list, and I'll put this on YouTube. Uh, I will put that out there so everybody can do it because everybody should go listen to these. Um, and there's a couple of them, um, a couple of years I have, don't know what they are, and I got to yeah, go check them out. Yeah, most years I don't know. You know. To be honest with you, and I've never heard most of the songs on your list. Yeah, so I need to, also, I'll, I'll make a. The, the original will be for sale on eBay soon. So get, <laughs> get those get get those pocket save, books out. Save your pennies. Warm those credit cards up. <laughs> Be sure and get that PayPal get 3% account. Three percent off with an Apple Wallet card. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap this one up. We got. I got some pizza. I got some pizza here mm. for afterwards, so we can do that. Nice. And Dave, um, I don't want to sound like a like a like a drinking man, but glad to have you back. <laughs> 
Hey, thanks, Horn. <laughs> Somebody smells oh, stinky. Oh, 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 I do want to give two shout outs if they're still watching. I want to give it to my friend Mule. Mule. Out of Ooh. Sweden, because check what he made up. He wrote, he drew Chicobra. Ooh, that is, that's, well, Is man. that awesome? Is that awesome? Oh, that's great, man. Yeah. Oh, we love that. Mule Fuck drew yeah. up Chicobra here. Awesome. So we're going to start a clothing line. On this stuff here. God, what if we become fashion moguls? I know. That'd be the unlikely. Crazy. So, Mule, I gotta give him a shout out because he did that just on the on his own. There's a guy that I met when I was over in Sweden, he lives in Stockholm, and all my friends that came down from Gothenburg, they go, Mule, Mule. And I'm like, I don't know who that is. They go, You you don't know Mule? I'm like, no. And so I got to know him over you know, we're like over uh, you know, Facebook and stuff, so I brought him some shirts and hats. We just hit it off. The guy's an awesome artist. He's done a bunch of stuff, a bunch of bands and everything. He's fantastic. And uh, he and I have been having a blast with all this. And the other one I want to give a shout out to is my friend Hans Havron. Uh, Hans Havron, excuse me. Hans Havron. Hans Havron. Hans Havron. You don't know how to speak anything. I know, I know. I'm terrible. I thought you were white. I know. Hansi lives in Bali. And and, uh, I've known him from his dad. And he does these Great artwork. I mean, this just killer artwork. Usually, uh, like with an airbrush, and he does these just killer. It's like an Asian sort of skateboardery. And Hans, I apologize if I'm screwing that up for you here, but these great, this great artwork. But he did this piece, and I wrote him. I said, "What a great piece!" He goes, "Oh man!" He goes, "He goes, thanks." He goes, "But I got to tell you, I love what you and Dave are doing on the podcast because he's from Austin, he's from Wimberley." Oh, wow. and he would say, "He goes, and he goes, man, I just so love hearing all the Texas stuff and everything like that." And I was like, "Holy shit!" I know he listened to it, so I tried to give him a shout out because hey, uh, thanks, you know, Hans, Hans, get thanks, those. Hans, yeah. Give so, me a tattoo next time I see you. He would be a great one to draw a tattoo that, for you. Get that tattoo. You need to get oh, that no, tattoo. Oh, no, no, no. This, this is uh, Mule. That's I Mule. I know, but he's going to tattoo that on your face. Oh, wow. That would be awesome. Yeah. Very papillon. That's going to be the next. On the next episode, Brian gets tattooed in the face. Oh, that would be awesome. And funk music. <laughs> Together. <laughs> Mellow together. It's called the mashup. Funk and two. <laughs> New kind of bird. The funk two. The funk two. Do the funk two. Do the funk two. Hey, <laughs> no, no, I gotta go to work tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry, boss. Funk two. <laughs> funk two. You got one too. I got one on my butt. <laughs> All right, kids. That's us. That's uh, uh I'm Dave Kendall. I'm saying bye bye. I'm Brad Newton Fuller. Saying bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.